Good morning, Algebra. This is a review of 8-5, and I thought the easiest way to do that would be to kind of go through some of the problems that you're going to have to do for homework. Now, 8-5 is all about pulling out that GCF, that greatest common factor, and the reason they do that first in factoring is because through the rest of the chapter, they're going to expect you to be looking for that greatest common factor. And they shouldn't have to tell you. You should be looking for it. Okay, so if I look at number 1, 15 and 30. Well, 30 is a multiple of 15. So I know that both of them are divisible by 15. They both have 1A and they both have 1D. So my GCF is 15AD. Well, because I started with a binomial, my chunk also has to have a binomial. Now, 15 AD goes into 15 AD once. 15 goes into 30 twice, and I'm gonna have an A left and a D left. When I have a binomial, I'm just looking for a GCF. When I have a trinomial, again, I'm just looking for a GCF. Now, at number three, I see that eight goes into all of those numbers. So eight is a part of my GCF. They all have one P and one R. So my GCF is eight PR. Now it goes into this, I'm gonna have a P left and an R left. Eight goes into 24 three times. And I'm gonna have two R's left. Eight goes into 16 twice and I'm not gonna have any P's or R's left, okay? Number five has four terms. Do not simplify it. This is the kind of problem that you're gonna get in 8-7 where you're gonna have a trinomial and you gotta break that middle number into two parts and factor by grouping, okay? So my first two, I can pull out an X. That gives me X times X plus four. Now remember, my chunk has to match. So over here, I need an x plus four. That means I've gotta pull out a two. Okay, this is my new GCF. And what's left? Okay. If I look at number seven, again, do not simplify. Because even in 8-7, they're going to say, break that middle term into two terms and factor by grouping. In my first two, I can take out a 4 and a B. And that gives me B minus 3. So my second term, I need to have a B minus 3. So again, I'm going to pull out a 2. My new GCF. And what's left? Okay, so grouping is I'm, I'm going to do them in pairs. When I'm solving, now 11 is an easy one. I'm not going to do that one because you're just setting this equal to zero and this equal to zero and finding um, what A can be that will make it equal to zero. So they did the hard part. They already factored it. They already factored it. Okay, this one isn't factored. So that's the first thing you have to do, is factor it. Well, 4P goes into both of those, and I'm gonna have a 2P minus one. So either 4P equals zero, or 2P minus one equals zero. Well, if 4P equals zero, P equals zero, so here, 2p is going to equal 1, so p equals 1 half. Okay? Number 16, I'll kind of help you with, because I'll tell you right now, a lot of people get this one wrong because they say, ooh, let's divide out an x. Let's divide out a 9. But what is x? You can't solve this if it doesn't equal to 0. Besides, that 2 means I'm going to have two answers, two factors. And guess what? The first one is going to, well, let's, let's, let's set it equal to zero first. 
So 9x squared minus 27x equals 0. And then you got to pull out that GCF, okay, and finish it. Now, number 17, they give you a formula, and they want to know how long the rocket is in the air before it returned to the ground. Now, my only hint is, see, I under, underlined return to the ground. How high is it when it comes back down to the ground? Zero. So H is zero. And I think you can do it from there. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye.